Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Almack. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to do an easy pop-up card using a whole bunch of penguins. And a lot of the supplies that I'm using today are from Lawn Fawn. This is one of the new stamp sets from Lawn Fawn called Snow Cool. And it has a big snow and a big cool and then lots of other little phrases that you can mix and match with it. Different pieces that you can put together to come up with different ones. You can use these for a holiday card, you can use them for winter cards, birthday cards, all different kinds of things. And then there's snow at the top. I'm going to combine it with some elements from Toboggan Together from last year. So we're going to have a whole bunch of different elements that we can add onto a scene. But this is the stitched hillsides die. When you die cut it out, it's got the hillside already there. It's got some parts that cut through and then some that are perforated and you just fold along the perforations. You don't even really need any instructions to make this happen because once you have it in your hand, it'll become very obvious. And when I have these top pieces folded, you can see from above, if I put that against the back of the card, it's all going to hold out from that, that card base and pop out forward. So here it is with the card base that I have ready for it. If I were to glue it down, there's no glue on it right now, and then just press that against the back side, then you can see how it stands out. And I have a depth of hillsides using this die. It's a really simple way to create this pop-up card. I've stamped all of my penguins and a couple of the accoutrements down there, the, uh, the little snowballs and that sort of thing. Stamped them all on here. And I am going to fussy cut mine out. The reason is because on some of them, I had to add hats to them and I added the ice cream cone and that sort of thing. And if you're going to add those kind of elements, you can't really use the dies unless you die cut out the little tiny pieces as well. And since I didn't want to add the little tiny pieces, I had enough things that were going to be glued inside this card. I didn't want to take the chance on things falling off. So I decided to stamp them all together. And that means I will just fussy cut them out. But there are die sets as always. Lawn Fawn does a really good job of that. So if you're going to fussy cut, you can even get away with making this process of coloring go even faster because you don't even have to stay in the lines, just on the outside edges. You can just scribble all, you, all that you want and not really have to worry about tidy coloring. But I'm worrying about tidy coloring because you're sitting here watching and I know it would drive some of you absolutely bonkers if I went completely outside the lines on all of these images. So I'm using a medium gray, a darker medium gray, and then a, um, a really dark gray to do the three shades on my shading and adding just a little bit of dimension to them. And I'm just scribbling the color. I'm not using any flicking, no fancy techniques here. I'm just scribbling the color in to get plenty of ink onto that, that little penguin area because that's how Copic markers blend. They blend within the fibers of the paper, so you wanna have enough color on there and just scribble on enough color that's gonna work. And this one made me glad that I decided I was going to fussy cut because I went outside the lines on Snow, Snow Penguin's hat. So for my other elements, I decided I was gonna add some very simple red coloring. Each one will have little red elements to it. So that way the whole thing will be united on the card. You could do all different kinds of colors, but I decided just red and black for my coloring would be really simple and, and kind of nice to tie everything together in my scene. And I'm not even gonna do any shading on it. I'm just gonna let them be. Add a little bit of orange for all the beaks and the feet and that sort of thing. And I'm assuming my ice cream cone is a snow cone. So it's going to have a white cone to it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And there's a lot of different colors you can use to make snow, but blue tends to make them look a little bit on the frosty side. So I'm using a B00 with a B000 to blend it out a little bit softer. Quadruple zero would be even softer still. And I'm just going to take some scissors, some detail scissors, and fussy cut them all out. So uh, I tend to move my hand rather than my scissors so that I go all the way around the edges and then I take a marker when I'm done with all of it, a black marker or a dark gray, and go around those edges so if there's any areas that I didn't cut out perfectly, that will cover them up. There won't be any white showing around the outside edge. I will not bore you with watching me do all the coloring. So next I'm going to work on that back panel. So before I add my dye in here, I wanted to do a little bit of a sky. Not a whole lot, 
but I'm going to do some airbrushing. So I took a piece of scratch paper and tore it. And then this is my Copic airbrush. You just take a Copic marker and point the chisel nib in and then press that little button. And then all you have to do is have it attached to your source of power, which for me is a compressor that's on the ground, and then squeeze that and it puts out a little bit of color. Now, depending on the color of marker, it will be darker or lighter and you can use lighter pressure or heavier pressure. Lots of different techniques you can use for airbrush. There is an airbrush video available and I will link you to that in the description down below that has basically what do you need to get started with doing Copic airbrush. So if you're interested in that, we'll have more education out there for you. And I'm just gonna move this piece of scratch paper around and make some clouds. You could do something very similar to this using perhaps distress inks. Just tear up a piece of paper and then do some inking on the other side of the paper, on that top side, that would give you the, the look of clouds. Because you're basically coloring the negative space on the other side of the clouds as you're doing this. You're coloring the sky portion. And this is gonna make it look like just a whole bunch of piled up clouds. You can tear several different pieces of paper to make different shapes of clouds but I really just wanted something for that back of the card so that when I create that whole scene in the front with the pop-up die that it's gonna work nicely. Now when I do any kind of elements that are going to be interactive, I tend to glue them down with this Be Creative tape. It comes in a lot of different widths and I have a lot of different widths with it, but it holds like you, you just wouldn't even believe. And with a pop-up card like this, you want it to really stick. You want those two panels to stick to the back of the card really nicely. So what I've done is put some Be Creative tape, some skinny stuff on the backs of those two pieces, fold it down and then close the card and then press it down. And then you can see it opens very nicely. Okie dokie. So that is the construction of that itself. And then I took all of my little penguins and I just glued them into my scene wherever I wanted to have them. So I have the sentiment with the igloo and a little penguin there and then all of my little penguins piled up. They're all attached with Be Creative tape, again, because I didn't want to take any chances on anything falling apart, but you can see how nice that scene stands up, and it's gonna look beautiful on somebody's mantle for Christmas time. The outside of the card, I could have stamped that image on there and colored it, but the color would have gone through the paper. In general, that's what Copic markers do. They go through the paper, and I wanted to keep that not showing through on the inside, so I glued him on and glued a little penguin beside the little uh, little igloo on the inside. This also is going to leave me with little space to write so I get to just sign my name. I don't have to write a long letter. Sometimes I like cards like that where I don't have a whole bunch of space to fill with a lot of words. But I hope you enjoyed this and that you'll try this kind of a die with some of your stamps because it's so much fun. You can do a lot of different scenes with it. You can use it different times of year as well. So consider picking up that die because you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Here's a couple other interactive cards I've done. Well, actually two of them, left and right are interactive. And they all have some Copic coloring to go along with them though. And you can hit the subscribe button if you like, hit more on the blog to go see stills of all of this. Supplies are all listed in the description and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.